this computer and then I'm gonna share my screen and hopefully everybody can see that. And I'll go small here so you don't get in the way. All right, does everybody see that? Yes. All right, so I won't be able to see a chat uh, when I'm lecturing. So if you want something, ask or comment, you're gonna have to speak up into the speaker. I have, we had some chatting going on yesterday during slide review and I never saw it. So apologize for that. Uh, it does record uh, chat. I don't know with this one, but another Zoom account I do, it does record uh, the chat conversation. So. Um, I didn't know if that feature was on on this one or not, but I did notice it last night after a meeting I hosted last night. Okay, so what we're doing is blood and tissue parasites. We've got the hemoflagellates here. Um, so you think some of this is like, oh, this will, this will never happen in the United States, but it is. So that's the take home. Uh, again, we think of these as you know, Saharan desert, um, African illnesses, South American illnesses, but we actually have um, cases in the United States. So with the hemoflagellates, they have life cycles too. So we're gonna work on the life cycles and what you're gonna see in the lecture is it's gonna be um, descriptive and then it'll come into the pictures uh, and then it have the CDC life cycle uh, we'll show too. Um, so we'll cover that and we'll bounce back from the description because the so description doesn't sound like, oh, I'm never going to remember that. We'll see a picture and then come back and review it in lecture. So hang on. So it's not, not as bad as it's going to feel like when we go through it. So we have vectors with these. Hemoflagellates have vectors and you see these uh, classified with, the, with their illnesses. So we have American sleeping sickness. Uh, this is the Reduvid or kissing bug, um, panstrongulus, triatoma, and uh, rhodonius species. We have African sleeping sickness, the uh, glossina uh, species, the tsetse fly, and then we have old world form of leishmaniasis, which is the plebotomos uh, species, the sand fly. Uh, South American leishmaniasis is the uh, letzomaya, or let's oh my Ia, or let's oh my let's go with that my Ia. so species of the sand fly let's oh my so Chagas you'll hear uh, there's always cases when you see uh, CDC reports throughout the year Florida always seems to be uh, kind of the new spot for Chagas disease you'll see that outbreak uh, every so often in South Florida of course, it's not like we, you know, couldn't go to South Florida, so we definitely could come in, in contact. So the Reduvid or the kissing bug, again, there's uh, three species. There's the Panstrongulus, the Triatoma, and the uh, Ronias. So this guy right here. So when we think of the tsetse fly distribution, again, we think, oh, you know, lives in the moist savanna, uh, woodlands regions, uh, need about uh, 500 millimeters of rain. Does anybody want to convert that into inches for me? And then the tsetse flies carry a parasite which infect livestock and people with trypanosomiasis, the sleeping sickness. So we don't think of this region, oh, we don't need to worry about this, you know. Um, but who knows, you may be on a, a mission trip one day and you end up in one of those areas um, and you definitely are told about the tsetse fly and try to avoid getting a bite from the tsetse fly. Anybody come up with the 500 millimeters of rain? How many inches? It's right under 20. It's 19.685. 20 inches of rain a year. Is that a lot of rain? Not really. Not really. Okay, we can kind of do that on a weekend around here, right? Um, TT fly again, we got some great pictures. Did 
This looks like that's going to hurt, doesn't it? We have the sand fly. And we got block up here at the top, so the recording's going to have a little bit of. So this is the phlebotomus. Um, looks like a big oversized mosquito. Taking a blood mill. So the hemophilagellates, we're going to start with the uh, stages of the life cycle. So this is tripomastigote. So that's kind of a new one for us. Long, slender, fusiform, shaped parasite. And then it has some internal structures that are going to be key to our uh, identification of these. So the kinetoplast, um, which will be a clump of DNA uh, inside the um, parasite. Then there's a flagellum uh, that is located posteriorly. And then the flagellum uh, passes forward across the body, forming the outer edge of the undulating membrane. So we've seen an undulating membrane with our um, giardia and may project free anteriorly. Okay, so that's the flagellum. So what's going to be key to that is, is that it actually projects anteriorly. So it's going to look like, um, you know, that the anterior part, which we're used to seeing, we're used to seeing the flagellum on the back end posteriorly for, for movement. Um, so this one's going to be posteriorly, but it's going to project anteriorly. So it's going to be a little weird to think about when we start looking at uh, which end is which with the uh, parasite. So we had the, the tripomastigote first, and then we're going to have the promastigote, and then we're going to come back to these and show you, you know, we're going to have a drawing here in a minute to show you the, the, the structures. So again, the promastigote's long, slender, fusiform shaped parasite. The flagellum still there, the, kinet the kinetoplast is still there, uh, or anteriorly located, uh, and the nucleus is centrally located. And then the amastigote is the ovid shaped parasite, which has lost the external flagellum. So that's easy one when we get to the amastigote because there's no more flagellum. The internal structures include the nucleus, the, the kinetoplast, and sometimes a short intracytoplasmic flagellum. So sometimes, but not the long um, flagellum we're going to see. So here's our just the American trypanosomiasis. So at the top, we went in reverse. Here's the amastigote. And of course, you see man, all forms are in the blood and tissue. Uh, so the amastigote. You know, it's got an internal flagellum, but no post, you know, and, you know, external flagellum. Promastigote, again, the kinetoplast, and the nucleus is here, and this is your flagellum. And so you can see that that's going to project anteriorly. And so they, with the here, um, <clears throat> different ones, we're going to know these by the by the kinetoplast where they're located. If you look at this switch roux here with the African trypanosomiasis, we're going to go over trypanosoma brucei and gabinese and the trypanosoma brucei uh, rodinensi. Um, rodi, rodinensi, yes. There's an N in there, sorry. All right, so we're going to see this kinetoplast move. So here, posterior end, here, more midsection here anteriorly. So that's going to be the key to helping us locate or identify the different trypanosomes. So let's start with trypanosoma cruzi. <clears throat> Geographical location, um, Central America, South America, Southern United States. So definitely one um, that could be here. Uh, the World Health Organization, more than 6 million people are estimated to be infected globally. 30% of the people who are chronically infected develop heart issues. So that's, that's going to be the issue. So 6 million people worldwide, 30% uh, chronically infected, heart issues, 10% develop digestive and neurological 
the leading cause of death among the testing positive is related to heart issues. Okay, the most common symptom of the infection. Chagas disease can double or triple your risk. There it is, death. So um, definitely a, an issue with the World Health Organization. CDC, that's our, our, our unit, right? Estimates there are 300,000 cases of Chagas in the United States. Uh, the most don't even realize they have it. Most of these infections are contracted in other countries. And as you travel, you become infected and bring it back. So this uh, triotamine bugs, <clears throat> uh, also called kissing assassin or vampire bugs, where are they? They hide indoors or out and usually bite humans while they're sleeping. The kissing bugs, which carry the disease, have been reported in, all, in 25 United States, almost at all, but half, let's say half the United States, the largest concentration in the United States. I mean, the south part of the United States. The reduvid bugs uh, are associated with a number of different mammals. They do not ordinarily defecate at the time of feeding. And that's what we're talking about is the bug is on you, biting you. And basically what it does around the bite is it defecates around that bite, close to the bite. So it makes sense that how do you get infected? You know, it's on the outside, no problem, right? But then that bite becomes itchy, you scratch it. And with your scratching, you introduce um, it into the bite that the kissing bug made. So the life cycle, that being said, transmission, bite, okay, of the reduvid or kissing bug. Um, infective stage is that we have a metacyclic uh, trifomastigote, a small trifomastigote form which resides in the hind gut or the rectum of the insect. So the posterior station during the feeding, the reduvid bug defecates and the metacyclic trip tripomastigote is passed in the feces. Ugh, right? Cause of the bite is intensity, puritic, itchy, uh, the infective stage rubbed into the puncture made by the insect into the abrasion and it enters. And that way it gains access to the bloodstream and that's where we're going to you know, diagnose these. Uh, so all of a sudden you've done a, you know, a blood smear and you've got something weird, wild going on. Um, that might be where we find it. After the parasite enters the tissue, the tripomastigotes lose their flagella. So they're introduced with the flagellum and then they lose uh, their flagella and undulating membrane and they become the amastigotes. So, and that's how they multiply. And multiplies amastigotes without that flagellum. They're found in cardiac muscle in cells of the monocytic phagocytic system, meaning they get it, you know, phagocytized. Uh, they eventually pass through the promastigote and epimastigote forms, which develop into the tripomastigote, tripomastigote, uh, which is that, you know, all these others have the flagellum right except for the amastigote and then once they get to the tripomastigote they are ingested by the reduvid bug feeding on you again you're infected they've made it through the life cycle and the reduvid bug is kissing on you again and pulls up a blood meal that contains the, the tripomastigote and to go out and to transmit that somewhere else <laughs> Once the insect gets the trifomastigote, of course, uh, becomes a short epimastigote that divide and produce long epimastigote forms. The posterior portion of the midgut of the insect takes about eight to 10 days. The epimastigote develops into the metacyclic trifomastigote um, and moves into the hindgut and the rectum and getting ready to be feced out on the next bite to complete the cycle into the new host. So this is Trypanosoma cruzi. Um, let's just take uh, the, let's start here at one with the, <laughs> the biting 
bug, right? Takes its uh, blood meal on you somewhere, right? It's on you. It is, there's our trypomastigote, the infective stage right here. This is the bug over here. So then it enters into the, the bloodstream. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so here's the human stage, metacyclic trypomastigote. Here is, uh, in, this gets into the cells of the amastigote, multiplying into the tissue. Okay, so the trypomastigote can infect other cells as it develops, or it's ready to be what? Harvested again by a bite of the bug. It takes the epimastigote, you got the trypomastigote here, takes in the epi, multiplies in the mid gut to the hind gut, and then it's ready to be transferred to its new victim. So diagnostic stage, intracellular, phagocytized, tripomastigote. The infective stage, tripomastigote from the kissing bug. So what is the disease of trypanosoma cruzi? Primary site <coughs> spreads from the blood to the lymph fluid through the lymphocytes, monocytes, and granulocytes. Of course, that's the phagocytic cells and lymphs or not, but it's moving uh, the organs of the, mon of the mononuclear phag, the liver, spleen, lungs, bone marrow, lymph nodes, where any of those cells are, are being circulated through. And then we get the amastigote form without the flagella found in the myocardium or central nervous system, even worse. Once it gets to the heart tissue, uh, inflammatory exudate, increased uh, interstitial connective tissue leading to fibrotic fibrosis of the heart tissue, not good, right? So it's basically killing that heart tissue to be flexible and expanding and contracting. So you see that with an EKG. And then here's a key word to remember is Romana sign. Romana sign is what we see with children that are infected with trypanosoma cruzi, high fever, inflammation, and then there's this marked edema in the eyelid area around the eye. So we're going to see a picture here and you will not forget uh, Romana sign. So Chagas disease, most common and most severe in children less than five. And death can occur within a few days or weeks if not treated. If you're a little older, like above five, right? Or you're an adult, malar, chronic form occurs, myocarditis, neurological disorders, not fun, dilation of the GI tract. We're going to see a megacolon here in a minute. Ugly, ugly, ugly picture coming. So be warned. I don't think I even have the, uh, the, the due to graphic material um, key warning there. So sorry. Uh, myocardial damage leads to congestive heart failure. So end up moving into that. And if you're not familiar with congestive heart failure, heart rate goes down, fluid goes up, fluid builds up, gets into the lungs, get pneumonia, puts even more pressure on the heart. The heart enlarges trying to overcorrect for that. Uh, so you get this enlarged heart uh, on your patient's x-ray. You can definitely tell. Good thing is there's two antiparasitic drugs to uh, treat infection. There's benzidazole and nifuritimox, right? So a couple of drugs, uh, almost 100% effective. That's the good news. Um, but it fades the longer someone's infected. So this would be great if we could diagnose early, hey, yes, Gay, gay. Um, but there is adverse effects that occur in almost half the patients, 40% of the patients. And treatment can take up to two months. So good news, bad news. So here is Romana's son. Swollen eyelids, eyes swollen shut, one.
This is that enlarged megacolon. So how do we demonstrate trypanosoma cruzi, uh, the trypomastigotes in peripheral blood? This long, slender, fusiform shape, 20 micrometers, nucleus centrally located, canadoplast um, located posteriorly, is large and oval in shape. And then, then when you see them in a, in a stained smear, like if you made your diff, uh, you would definitely say there is a C-shaped organism parasite in this on this smear that I do not care to see right um, historical picture from Peru 1976 of course I'm sure way before we had personal protection gloves but here's that c-shaped okay so here is the centrally no located nucleus this is the canadoplast, if you're watching my arrow on the screen. Okay, and we said that was what? Located anteriorly or posteriorly? Posterior, I think. The posteriorly, yes. So that's what I mean. This flagellum wraps up into projects anteriorly. So it looks weird, right? That this, this thing is out front instead of back behind when we think of a flagellum propelling a parasite through your blood. So this is your blood, red blood cells there. So hopefully as a trained hematologist, you wouldn't miss this. So this is, um, monocytic, engulfed, more of the amastigote look to it. This is in cardiac tissue, amastigotes that have indwelled into the tissue and starting to break it down. So of course, diagnosing is in young children, Chagas disease is easily demonstrated in older children Parasites are difficult to find. So, um, you know, that five-year-old, the good thing that's, you know, it's more severe in the five-year-old, but it's easier to, to see and diagnose. So this is a new concept, maybe for you to think about, the xenodiagnosis, um, where we actually bring in the, um, we breed reduvid bugs. And we let them bite the individual that we may think has a trypanosoma a cruzy infection. All right. And if the patient is infected, the trypanosomes to multiply in the reduvid bug that we introduced. Um, so this is very successful with blood films that, that fail. So if we had one older child or adult, it'd be hard to diagnose. Uh, but this may be an easier way to do it to find, to kind of harvest the. Uh, the trypanosome and show it that way. So I always like to say, you know, that'd be great. You know, you, you walk into the doctor and you got, you know, your kid's got Romana sign and, and the doctor comes in and says, well, I got this little case here and we got some, some kissing bugs that we're going to let bite your kid. And uh, we're going to take those back and see if the lab can find those. Uh, you know, think about how, how many moms or dads are going to let that happen. Right. But, but if you're out in some, you know, somewhere in some village out in the middle of nowhere, and that might be the, the way we do it. Um, but it's definitely a way of finding them. So that's good. Any questions on trypanosoma cruzi? Have y'all heard of, of Chagas before today? Did you, have you ever heard of uh, any CDC alerts about Chagas and uh, South Florida before today? Not really. Not really? Okay. Now you'll kind of watch that, right? You'll see these little CDC alerts, uh, usually in the summer when people are out and about, right? And uh, definitely can, can hear about some cases being found.
So we have Trypanosoma rangeli, or range, uh, jelly, Trypanosoma rangeli. Central America, South America, um, disease, asymptomatic infections, most commonly seen in children or people under 16 years old. Same vector. Uh, the vector is the reduvid, the kissing bug again. Many different domestic and wild animals act as the reservoirs, uh, and none does it cause disease. So it doesn't make the reservoir host sick. So uh, domestic and wild animals that are infected um, are definitely not showing the disease. There's no evidence of pathogenicity, even when the parasites are recovered from blood. Uh, and so in asymptomatic infection, trypanosomes are transmitted through the salivary secretions with this one. So remember we said the re reduvid bug could either defecate when it's biting you, taking a blood meal, or could harbor with the salivary, you know, move up into the system and be transferred through a salivary bite, not the feces. So that's key with the difference. There again, long, slender, fusiform body, 30 micrometers. Undulating membrane is very broad. Nucleus is anterior to the center of the body, and the uh, kinetoplast is minute, round, and more anteriorly located. So if that flagellum is coming up front, the kinetoplast will probably be up there with it. So we'll see. Uh, well, it's not all the way up, but this is kinetoplast, more anteriorly placed, not totally posterior. Again, here is our nucleus. West African sleeping sickness, Trypanosoma brucei gambonisi, gambonisi. So this one, uh, west coast of Africa. <clears throat> Tripomastigate tripo, tripo are ingested by the tsetse fly. Okay, so we got a different vector here. So you get a tsetse fly bite. Um, it ingests from the human. Reproduction occurs mid gut and hind gut of the tsetse fly. 10 days later, numbers of broad, short trypanosomes, uh, sometimes epi, are present. Long slender tripomastigotes are produced from the broad forms. These forms multiply by binary fusion. After migrating to the salivary gland, because remember, um, they attach to the epithelial, develop into broad epis, and they divide and turn into metacyclic forms. So we got a flagella again. The metacyclic tripomastigotes are in the infective stage. The tsetse introduces it into the next victim through the salivary injection into the puncture wound during feeding. Once in the man, the host, the parasite lives in the blood, lymph nodes, central nerve, or cerebral spinal fluid. The tripomastigotes in the blood are ingested by another tsetse fly upon feeding, and then it keeps going. There are no animal reservoirs, so no, no animal other than humans are known to carry um, Trypanosoma brucei gambonisi. <clears throat> so here's our two uh, sleeping sicknesses um, Trypanosoma brucei gambonisi and Trypanosoma brucei rodentsi. And you see the tsetse fly here takes a blood meal, picks up the infective stage. Here's the tsetse. So once it gets into the human, injected metacyclic trichomastigote transforms into the bloodstream, which is carried to other sites. Here we are multiplying by binary fission in the body fluids, it could even be in the spinal fluid. And then we have the diagnostic stage of the trichomastigote in the blood.
TT fly bites again. The host brings that up into a blood meal into its transformation, procyclic to epimastigotes, okay, and then trichomastigote is ingest is in injected through the saliva of the bite. Let's try uh, trypanosoma brucei gamanis. Um, we got highly pleomorphic, one form is long, slender, triple mastigote with a long free flagellum. And then there's another form that's short, broad, lacks the free flagellum, so about half the size. <coughs> so we can have different forms of the, um, the parasite. In fresh blood smears, the triple Trypanosomes are colorless. They move rapidly among the red blood cells. So we stain them. Gimsa stain, nucleus stains reddish, cytoplasma and undulating membrane are pale blue. The kinetoplast, a dark red dot. The free flagellum is at the anterior end. So again, there's our kinetoplast, our nucleus, and our flagellum on the anterior end. So what disease? Following the bite, incubation period, could be a few days, several weeks. At the end of the incubation period, the patient is still in an apparent excellent health while it has trypanosomes appear in the blood. So after incubation, there are three progressive stages. There's the trypanosome predominantly in the blood, there's trypanosomes in the lymph nodes, and there's the invasion into the central nervous system which we would hope to see in the cerebral spinal fluid. Invasion of the lymph nodes is associated with onset of fever. During the fever, we may find a large number of trypanosomes. During the afebrile period, we may not find any trypanosomes. It's kind of like an immunological, you know, there's fever and there's probably a reason, and that would be the numbers. At this beginning of the febrile period, which may be days to weeks, there's usually a glandular enlargement, posterior cervical region. This is known as winter bottom sign. So it's definitely a <clears throat> diagnosing stage and we may find trypanosomes in an aspiration of the enlarged nodes, some of those lymph nodes. And there's a steady progression in the development of the central nervous system, meningoencephalitis, and increased apathy, confusion, and somnolence. So what do we got? We got this patient going south in a hurry, right? Progressive in the central nervous system usually continues, but there may be remissions exacerbations with the course extending over several years. Extreme emaciation is seen patients without nursing supervision, but in contrast, the face is edematous. So the patient looks like they're starving, right? They're emancipation, they're emancing, um, emaciation. And then there's this big swollen face. So when it gets its sleeping sickness name. Trypanosoma brucei rodents <laughs> is Eastern Africa, Central Africa. The other one's Western, right? Uh, the life cycle's the same morphologically indistinguishable. So again, if we had those on a slide for you to identify, which would probably be um, on the final. 
final exam in lab, it would be indistinguishable, so we would list them both together. Trypanosoma brucei rodinensi and Trypanosoma uh, gambinis, brucei gambinis. Eastern African sleep, sleeping sickness, Trypanosoma brucei rodinensi. Similar to uh, that of Gambian, for more, but it is more virulent, rapidly progressing. Because when we talked about Gambianese, we said it was a slow progression, could be weeks, months, off and on, fever. Uh, here, it's more virulent, rapidly progressing. Patients, patients frequently die before full development of the signs of the meningoencephalitis. Uh, the incubation period short. The, uh, Tripomastigotes appear in the blood early in large numbers. And winter bottom sign is often absent. Since we just don't get to the glands, we don't get the swollen glands. Um, weight loss is rapid, central nervous system involved early. Patient usually untreated will die uh, within nine months to a year after onset. To diagnose, gambian trypanosomiasis uh, with the parasites more readily found than gambian form. Differential diagnosis can be on the geographical grounds. Um, so again, if you look into epidemiology, uh, you get over into Africa and you're searching out trypanosomas, you'd be on the east coast, west coast. Uh, should help you there, but not always. Uh, with Uganda, both exist. Rodinsi has a number of animal reservoirs. Uh, we've got, um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the roebuck and the uh, heart, heart of beast and the ox, maybe the ox you're familiar, familiar with. Uh, so those being those reservoir hosts means control is pretty hard to come about. So we have some pictures. And that is the end. So I will stop the share. Open up for questions. It is a beautiful day today. The snow is coming down um, right now. Beautiful picture out in front of me. So hopefully you'll get some time to go have fun in this. Um, and then if anybody is Pipes freezing, I guess electricity stayed on last night. I think some people in had to roll out, which was awful, um, but hopefully none of y'all are experiencing that. But if you have some concerns or need us, email us, text us, uh, let us know, okay? Do y'all have any questions over our trypanosomas today? I don't think so. All right. Thanks for uh, letting me know somebody's listening. Yay. All right. So um, we'll see you guys on Friday. No lab tomorrow. I will do this again at nine on Friday and it'll be the last lecture before uh, exam number three. If nobody has any questions. All right. We'll end it and we'll see you guys Friday morning at nine.